Welcome to the Stay Paid Podcast, where we help agents and entrepreneurs master the latest business trends to unlock growth and create a life of freedom. Brought to you by Reminder Media. Hey, Stay Paid listeners. Thank you so much for listening to the show. If you've ever wondered what Josh and I actually do for a living, we're not just the best podcast hosts on the face of the planet. We actually want to help you with the most important thing in your business. How do you generate more referrals and repeat transactions? I don't have to convince any of you that you have to stay top of mind. You know you need to send something. The question is, what should you send? We create for you the very best touch point to send your database your own custom magazine. We create a 48 page coffee table publication designed and delivered for you. Not only can you customize it with the obvious info, your photos, logos, you can actually go deeper. You can customize it to the individual. You can send a birthday letter on the inside of their magazine, an anniversary letter. You could feature listings. You could feature local businesses that you partner with. It's really limitless what you can do with this thing. And guess what? Because it's Black Friday, we're gonna give you a chance to try this like no other time. Absolutely. This is probably our craziest deal. Definitely our best deal that we've ever done. Uh, Even for Black Friday, this is crazy for us. We are reducing our setup fee, right? So the, the, the cost of getting the magazine customized, set up, getting your mailing list in and marked exclusive to you normally costs $300. We are dropping that down to $1 get for here. Black Friday only when you get started with your first magazine and pay ahead for that first magazine. Not only that, the second issue, we're going to give you 50% off the entire second mailing. Your third issue, we're going to give you 25% off. Our magazines get shipped directly to your recipients every other month. So that's literally six months of your touch point marketing right there. And if you're doing our minimum, which is only 50, yeah. that is almost a savings of $500. So get started uh, for Black Friday. Take advantage of this deal. It's only good during Black Friday in the link of the description of this video. Welcome to Stay Paid. My name is Joshua Stike. And I'm Luke Acree. And we have an amazing episode today. Joining us again, as always, Cody Smith and Stephen Acree from the Acree Brothers Realty Team, the number one team. <clears throat> in Lynchburg, Virginia. I like how you guys have your name. It always makes me say Cody first. That's very clever. Yeah. Every time, (laughs) baby. (laughs) (laughs) And joining us again, our return guest, Dan Allison. Dan is the founder of the Advisor Development Community and The Exchange and is a genius on referrals, having interviewed thousands of clients to better understand the behavior of why clients refer, why they don't refer, and the mistakes made when trying to refer people. He's used this information to develop a system that is followed by financial professionals and real estate agents around the world, leading to a consistent flow of referrals for those implementing his concepts. He's been a featured keynote speaker at hundreds of conferences on six of the seven uh, continents, which we learned Antarctica is still on the list for him to get (laughs) to, and in 49 of the 50 states. Dan, welcome back to Stay Paid. It is awesome to see you guys. Good. Thanks for having me on. Dan, man, it's awesome to have you back. Um, We have referenced your thought leadership so many times because you really are a referral expert. Top five. Top five for sure. Easy top five reference guests. Uh, Because like obviously we're in the referral space. Everybody who listens to the show knows we help agents keep in touch with their database, do different marketing mediums like our magazine and stuff to help them generate referrals. So referencing you, like this is our space is what we, and we reference you as one of the thought leaders on referrals. I'm curious right out of the gate to get your take on the landscape of referral marketing today, last time you were on the show was, you know, four or five years ago, I guess four years ago now. And, you know, there's a lot of people who say referrals is now re- considered a sales word. It's more of a dirty word um, in the sense of don't use it, use connection. I'm just curious, where do you see the referral landscape? And then we can talk about your system that you're teaching advisors and stuff. Yeah, I can tell you that the the people who think the word referral is a dirty word, I think they're overthinking it. Um, It's a word people understand. You can come up with fancier words like introduction and stuff. And I think a lot of times we try to change words so much that people don't even know what we're asking. So to me, I, I think if you're confident at the end of the day in the value that you provide to people and you truly believe that you're helpful to people, why would it ever feel uncomfortable to talk about providing that that help to other people. To me, uh, you mentioned, you know, we've interviewed thousands of people. My background's clinical psychology. So I study referring as a behavior. It's something we want clients to do on their own. We don't want to push them. Um, But when we interview people, they they are very comfortable with the idea of referring if they receive value and they have trust that the people will deliver. 
Um, I don't think we have to shy away from it. I think the biggest challenge with getting more referrals is in our head. It's a mental thing. We have too much sales training, honestly. Exactly. It's too much manipulation. I, I tend yeah. to agree. I think it's all in the confidence of delivery. There's a famous stat out there. I hope I don't get it wrong. It's Dale Carnegie says 90% of your customers when asked say they will refer, but 11% of salespeople ask. Is that true? Have you seen that in your research? Is is the problem that people aren't asking? What are you teaching agents and advisors to do to set up the referral? Here, here's what I'll tell you about that. Carnegie's right. Surprise. Um, we participate uh, and author questions for one of the biggest research studies every year on this topic. Uh, so we've got about 50,000 people globally take time to complete the survey. And it's not like click, click, you're done. It's pretty extensive. Uh, and we actually find that 94% of people report that they value the experience at the financial professional. That could be real estate. That could be advisory. Uh, they value the experience enough that they would confidently refer. What is way more interesting to me is 51% report that they have referred somebody in just the past year. But as we dig deeper, what we find is 81% of those people, their method of referring is passively giving out contact information versus making the connection. And Luke, one of the things I'll tell all you guys, the a lot of the sales training on referrals, if you look at like the financial advice space, some of the more common scripts are, hey, I get paid in two ways. And one of those ways is I expect referrals or the greatest compliment you could give me is a referral or don't keep me a secret. All these things that have in common me but when I interview actual clients about the behavior of referring and the motivation behind doing it, when I say, have you ever referred? And when they tell me, yes, I'll ask them, talk to me about the last time you did it. And then I'll ask them, why did you do it? Because it's risky. If something went badly, that could reflect negatively on you. Why did you take the risk? I've never heard in 21 years of interviewing thousands of clients around the world, I've never had somebody look at me and say, well, my advisor gets paid in two ways and they expect it. Or I wanted to, I wanted to compliment my realtor. Their motivation for referring is to simply be helpful to people they care about. So if we could change this mental paradigm of referrals are uncomfortable to talk about to the right people, they're not uncomfortable at all. In fact, people are trying to refer. Most of the time, they're just doing the wrong things, giving our name out doesn't normally lead to that prospect reaching out to us, whereby if they make a connection, an introduction, the, in, the likelihood that we're able to help those people skyrockets. So most of the time, it's not an issue of are they willing? Carnegie was right. They are. It's are they capable of executing a referral when they attempt to do it? And that's easy to fix. What does that execution look like? Like in terms of like, how can a an agent, financial professional, uh, get that information to their client of, hey, here's the best way to, f to yeah. do that referral? Yeah, so a uh, great question. To me, there's a proactive and a reactive way to handle it. I've owned a mental health company. Uh, when I was in my 20s, I started that. I had uh, about 600 employees within five years. We sold that. I bought a real estate and mortgage banking company, had that for about five years, had an exit. And now I have a consulting and coaching firm in the financial advice space. And I have deployed the exact same strategy in every single industry. And that is, um, number one, when somebody says, I gave your name to somebody the other day, right? We, uh, everybody who's in sales has heard somebody, hey, by the way, I gave your name to someone. The majority of people respond to that by saying, hey, thanks a lot. I appreciate that. But they know I'm, I'm pretty unlikely to hear from that person. And, and so there's a reactive way when somebody tells you I gave your name out and I say the same thing every time. What I say is I appreciate that. Can we talk about that for a minute? And they always say, sure. I say, I'm assuming that you did that because you thought that person might benefit from some help or some guidance. Is that accurate? I always ask, is that correct? Is that accurate? Which they always affirm. Uh, and then I say the problem with that is because they don't know and trust us, in the way that you do, uh, they rarely reach out unless there's real urgency with what's going on with them. And as a result, they rarely get the help and the guidance that you intended to provide to them. 
uh, which is bad. So now that we've talked about that, is there a, a comfortable way to at least tee up an introduction? It could be as simple as an email, depending on your relationship, but let's increase the likelihood that they actually get the help that they need if they need it. I have found the majority of times, if you simply say that, it will turn into a conversation and a brainstorming session about an actionable introduction instead of I gave your name out. And by the way, when somebody says that, I will promise you they have given your name out several times that you didn't even know about. They didn't bump into you and tell you. So if we could correct that one behavior, um, I, I think everything would take care of itself for business development. So reactively, uh, in fact, Luke, you had mentioned speaking around the world. Um, 13 years ago, I was referred to a, a global company and the CEO of the company that referred me, he said, hey, I love your stuff. I'm, I'm close friends with the leadership of this global firm. I'm going to send them your, your information and tell them to reach out to you, right? So I knew he was about to give my name out. I used the exact language. And this guy had just sat through four hours of training with me. <laughs> and I kept waiting for the moment that he'd be like, ah, I see. never even <laughs> happened, man. It blew right by him. He called the CEO on his cell phone. 10 minutes, I captured his attention. 13 years later, I'll bet I've done at least 500 events uh, around the world in Europe and Asia, Australia, New Zealand from that one moment. And I always think about like, what if I would have said, hey, thanks. I appreciate that. Like, I, I just got back from Europe or uh, Australia, New Zealand, and Singapore with that company. That would never have happened if I was not prepared for that moment. That is crazy. What about the the group that? Um, sorry, but, oh, but no, you're good. What, what about the group that isn't telling you? What about the those people that aren't saying? Oh, by the way, I referred you. Good, good question. So I proactively, so reactively, I've got to be prepared. But proactively, if you're working with a client, a matter of fact, I bought a house two weeks ago. So my realtor represented me in the negotiation of that. Uh, the lake house I'm in right now, she's going to prep for sale. You know, I had a great experience. We negotiate a great deal uh, on a property. When the client experiences some form of value, like, man, that was super helpful. All you have to do is say, hey, I appreciate it. I'm glad you experienced that. Uh, we love to help people in the way that we helped you. Now, there might be a time in the future that somebody you care about needs some kind of help or guidance, like what we just provided to you. And I want to talk about if that happens, what do we do? Because what happens is a lot of times our clients are trying to be helpful. So they give out our contact information, but because those people don't know or trust us, they rarely reach out. So what I'm doing is proactively conditioning that client to not exhibit the behavior that 81% of people do, which is give the contact. Because what will happen now is that client's going to call me and say, hey, I've got somebody I need to introduce you to. We can strategize the best way to do that. And now I've got a real effective referral instead of a bunch of people throwing my name out there. It is truly the what you're doing is bringing to awareness, like the pain point and the the need and that is what I think people underestimate so much. We try to teach our clients that with the magazine that they're sending, the key to the magazine is, yes, it makes you look great. Yes, it brings you top of mind. But the key is it gives you a reason to call and then have that type of conversation with your database. And what I try to tell people is you might have the conversation where you're sharing with people, hey, referrals and that you you know love referrals, you want to help more people, all that good stuff. And they might not refer you at all. But what you did is you brought it to their awareness. You planted the seed. Now every touch point that you send from this point forward waters that seed. What people tend to do when they market and they do it poorly is they just market, but the context for the consumer, they have no context of your marketing. And so the key is when you're doing referral-based marketing is to set the context for Dan, the client, and going, hey, Dan, this is I, I'm here to help you in buying, selling, investing, whatever. What can I do to help you? Give, give, give. But then now every touch point I send to you, you now know what Luke Acre needs and what he's looking for. And it is so powerful. I've seen it time and time again over the last decade. If you plant the seed with the client of how they can give you a referral and how it should work, you'll get way more referrals than the people who do not plant those seeds. And there's a huge lie out there 
that you don't have to ask for referrals, that you don't have to plant those seeds, that you can just do great service and people refer you. And I don't know if you run into this, Dan, or not, is like people think that they don't or shouldn't ask. They should just do great service and create an environment. And I tell people, great service is a bare minimum. You can't get referrals without great service, but there is no separator there. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I tell you what, the, the difference to me between the people who make a decent living and the people who are rock stars and build enterprise is they understand that everything that they do is strategic and there's a process behind it. Um, you don't, I think the people that say, I don't want to ask for referrals, what they're really saying is, I don't like the feeling of being rejected and I don't want this client to feel uncomfortable. And there are ways where you can, you can intentionally and strategically do the right thing. So you may not have to ask for referrals. They're just going to happen. But if you're uncomfortable having the conversation, it's because you have a fear of the unknown. You don't know how this client's going to respond. So I want to give your listeners uh, a strategy that I have used. And again, I have had uh, companies in multiple industries. So think about this. I I built a mental health company uh, and had an eight figure exit from then from there, and I did not have a, a license in psychology. I did not get my doctorate. I bought Crazy. a real estate mortgage banking firm, had an exit, did not have a real estate license, and then I bought an insurance firm, sold it three three years later for a multiple of 10 of what I bought it for, did not have, and still don't have, a life insurance license. So <laughs> what what did I do to do that? I followed the exact same process. And there there are three touch points that I focus on. Number one, when I am referred to a prospect, when I'm meeting with that prospect, we all know whether or not the meeting's going well, kind of that initial meeting. At the end of that, what I'll do is say, can I ask, was this a good use of your time? Are you glad that you spent this time here today? And when they say, yeah, this was super helpful, we appreciate it. All I do is say, you know, Luke, who referred you, he took a big risk when he did that. You're important to him. And if this was a complete waste of your time, that could reflect badly on him. Would you mind reaching out to him and just let him know it was worth your time? Now, why am I doing that? If anybody remembers Psychology 101, Pavlov's dog, positive reinforcement versus negative reinforcement, what I've done is now the, cl- the prospect who that referral source really cares about is the one calling the referral source saying, hey, I met your guy, Dan, thanks so much. What they just learned is that risky behavior of referring is actually not only not risky, I get positive reinforcement when I do it. I look good. The likelihood of a future referral from that person will skyrocket. So realtors, if it's a mortgage banking firm, a title company, do not miss the, the opportunity when a circle of influence takes that risk ensure that that person goes back and provides that positive reinforcement. So that's touch point number one. Touch point number two, now they actually are a client of mine, right? And what I do at the beginning of that relationship is I tell them, I I have a couple of goals uh, for the people that I help. My first goal is I want your experience to be so good with us that you would never consider using somebody else for what we do. Now, The problem with that is everybody defines a valuable experience differently. So one of the things I do for everybody I help is I block a little bit of time to get honest feedback from you. I'm going to ask you the things that you valued, the things that I did well, the things I could have improved on, because I want to make sure on a scale of one to 10, if you're at a seven, we have to have the kind of relationship where you tell me what eight, nine, and 10 are so I can improve. Are you comfortable with that? Of course, They all say yes, but I tell them my second goal, I want the experience to be so good that not only do you not want to use other people, you want people you care about to get our help. And I know talking about referrals can be uncomfortable for people, and I respect that. Um, On one hand, I could pound you over the head about referrals every time I see you, which I don't do. But on the other hand, if I don't talk to my own clients about it, you may know somebody who needs help and your perception might be that I'm too busy, I'm at capacity, I don't have time, would I even help somebody like that? That's bad because then people who need help don't get it. I simply ask, how comfortable are you with the idea of talking about referrals if you identify people who need help? 
So what I'm doing is, is I'm identifying that there might be an elephant in the room and I want to either confirm that it's here or I want to remove it. And when you hear your own client say, no, talk to me about it. Like, what kind of people are you trying to help? Now that fear of asking is gone. Um, the problem, I think, with the one size fits all approach to referrals, say this one script to everybody, there's risk. And that's why people aren't doing it. Let your people tell you, I'm behaviorally the kind of person who likes to be helpful to other people. And you can talk to me about that. Fear is gone. Or let them say, uh, you know, this part of my life's kind of private or I'm not the kind of person who really gets involved in other people's business. Perfectly fine. That's why I asked the question. I don't want to be talking about something that's important or, or uncomfortable for you. So I'll stay focused on giving you such a great experience. You don't want to use somebody else in the future. So that's touch point number two, new client. A, a lot of people think you have to deliver all this value before you can earn a referral. And it couldn't be further from the truth. The time that people are most likely to refer is at the initiation of the relationship. The example I give for any of you out there who are married, when was your spouse most likely to tell her girlfriends what an amazing guy you are? <laughs> right at the beginning, right? 20 years in, they're not sitting there bragging. I could go from, oh my God, he's a speaker and he speaks all over the world to, I can't believe people pay you to talk. Like, <laughs> it, you know what I'm saying? So, so don't miss that chance when they're a new client. And then finally, the third touch point is after I've delivered on my value. And I'll tell you, real estate agents, I, I, I rarely meet a, a real estate agent who has any kind of process that is meaningful. After the house is sold, the deal is closed, I represented the buyer, the seller, doesn't matter, where I ask for a half an hour of time or an hour of time, and I learn from them about the journey I took them on. I wanna learn from you, how'd you feel about this? How could we have been more effective or efficient in our communication? What did you value the most about what we did for you? When so, you learn that stuff, you're learning your real value proposition, not what you think it is. It's what your clients say to the, to the marketplace about you. And in that process, when somebody's raving to you about that experience, why on earth would it be awkward to say, I want to do that for more people? It's not. Um, so those three touch points I have followed in every single company I've ever owned. And it works. I took a 45 year old company that was stagnant and grew it 400 percent and sold it for 10x my investment by executing that. That's all I did. We didn't increase marketing spend. I took the people who already liked us and executed on that process uh, and had, had a great sale. That is ridiculous. That has been the piece of advice that you gave years ago that has stuck with me the most. Interview that, your clients. Yeah, that yeah. most people will hire consultants and pay them tens of thousands of dollars and your best <laughs> consultant is your current client and you're not even asking them what they think about you. And it's like, uh, I'm like, Luke, oh, that is stuck Luke, with me. I, I got to tell you a funny story real quick, Luke. So my son is 21 years old and he goes to uh, college in Arizona and he was home over the summer. And if, like any kid, he has no interest in what his dad does for a living. He just knows I fly all over the world and, and, and talk and stuff like that. But this summer, he said, hey, me and my buddies the other night, we were at home and we watched you on a podcast. And I said, oh, you did what, what podcast? And he said, I don't remember the name of it. But on YouTube, it was like 60,000 or 70,000 views. It was the Stay Paid podcast that we did. Um, so he had, he, he had watched my pod, and then I, I took him uh, to Boston this summer to, to see me speak for the first time at a convention. And afterwards, we were sitting down having dinner, and he said, I, I said, what would you think? And he said, well, he said, it was good. It was, it was great how you knew how to make people laugh, like that many people at one time. Like, it was good. But he said, the thing I don't understand is it felt like all you did is tell them, if you want to know how to be valuable to people, like, ask them how and they'll tell you and then just do that. And I was like, yeah, that's how dad makes a living. Uh, yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. But it's I mean, so you gotta, because everybody so complicates Yeah. Everybody complicates success. Everybody makes it harder than it needs to be. And it's not until you get somebody that 
is outside your industry, not affected by, doesn't need the commissions, not trying to close the deal, whatever it is that can just look at it practically and go, wait, it just seems like you're just asking people, tell me what you want, and then you deliver what they want. <laughs> it's, it's all psychology, man. It's all behavior. And, and if you want to manipulate and change behavior, you have to understand why does it happen the way it happens today, or you're not able to effectively motivate or curtail any kind of behavior. So yeah. you're really... I mean, a bit, go ahead, Cody, but you're really a business expert is what you are. I mean, you weren't a licensed uh, psychologist. You weren't a licensed real estate agent or mortgage person. You weren't a licensed. You're really a business expert. Uh, you could almost be, classify you as private equity, man. Like you you just yeah. come in the business better and flip it. <laughs> well, I look for, what I look for is relationship driven businesses. I'm not interested in product and inventory and stuff like that. But when when you have a relationship driven business, I think there's an, a, a terrible lack of training on psychology of behavior. I, I really do. And it's like, I can't tell you how many firms hire me to come in and coach them. And they'll be like, if it's a real estate company, well, we want to get more referrals from our, our COIs, you know, the mortgage lender, or if it's a financial advisor, it's, hey, we want lawyers and CPAs to refer us to more people. And, and I always ask, can you look me in the eyes and tell, tell me that you have actually maximized your clients and getting referrals from them. And every time they're like, well, probably not. It's like, then why are we worried about anybody else right now? Those people said yes to you. They gave you money. That, that is the, if you're delivering a good experience for those people, COIs are just ancillary additional business, but why would you not have a strategy and intentionality around your existing client base? It's a big problem. So what I like a lot, of, a lot of people will buy a company and add products or services to increase revenues. I find that if you buy the right company, all the revenue you're ever going to need is already inside of it. If they're good mm -hmm. at what they do, and it's putting systems and processes around, how do we engage our existing advocates in a way that is more effective as they try to get our help to people they care about? That's all you got to do. I love yeah, it, man. Really value based. So uh, I don't know if you guys read the book Mindset of a Sales Warrior, and uh, they go through uh, like an example of just having the right mindset. So when you think about a salesperson, often people have this negative emotion of cold calling and asking for. But if you're going through the mindset of adding value, which is what you've been talking about, it's a completely different feeling for the call. So instead of calling about someone selling a house, but actually, hey, I know that I can help you find the house that you're looking for is much different than me just trying to sell and get a commission check. So that whole mindset changes the whole conversation and wanting to ask for the referral. Why do you want to ask for a referral? Because I can impact your friend's life just like I did yours. It's like a completely different uh, feel and why you would do it. Yeah, everybody talks about growing our business, growing our revenue. And what I have to remind them is that doesn't happen until you have helped somebody. So instead of using, I want to grow my business, all you want to do is be helpful to more people. And who on earth could fault you for that if you're in a service industry? The right. greatest thing I had in the mental health industry and all the families that I helped you know, these families had kids with schizophrenia, bipolar disorder. It was a tough, tough situation. Mm -hmm. But the greatest asset I had was a lack of sales training. It never occurred to me mm -hmm. I was a sales guy. I never got trained to say, hey, I printed out your LinkedIn profile. Any of these people have a mental health issue? <laughs> like, yeah. we, I, we, just, we wanted to help as many families as we could help. That's why we were right. in the business. And I think the more you can internalize, am I valuable? Am I helpful to people? If you believe that, everything else is easy because the motivation for a referral is they want to be helpful to people. And that's what you're supposed to do for a living. So why would it be awkward to talk about? What's uh, next for you? Can you talk a little bit about the school community you just launched uh, with this, the exchange? I think you're calling it. Yeah. Yeah. We're really pumped up about that, man. Uh, so, you know, the last 21 years I've had my uh, consulting firm. Uh, so I do, you know, a lot of keynote speaking at conventions and then I do private workshops for firms that can afford to bring me in to, to spend the day with them and put them through the process. But it always bothered me if I'm on stage in front of a thousand people that, you know, 960 of them can't afford 
to do that. But but I'm not a technology guy. That's never been my skill set. I'm more just relationship. And I always wanted to build a platform that was affordable for people to get the intellectual capital that I've been able to build over the time that I've that I've been in the industries uh, that I've been in. So what I did, I partnered with another firm called the Model FA. David Desell, you actually know. Love He's David. Who in- he introduced us, referral. That's why I'm on the, the pod right now. And um, I, David, thank you for the referral. I like Dan better than you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Everybody to- does. It's okay. Yeah, he yeah. knows that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he's better looking and more manicured than I am, but, yeah, but I got him. The likability factor, he's from Boston. He's, a, <laughs> he's your Boston dude. Uh, no, so what, uh, what we did is we decided to partner on a, on a, a platform called The Exchange. Um, the Exchange, my, my dream was, what if we were able to pull high quality coaches together that don't coach in the same area, but complement each other philosophically, how they engage, they have quality courses and content, and we could create almost a Netflix model where people come in for 99 bucks a month, cancel any time that you want to cancel, they get access to all the different courses, which cover everything from cold prospecting all the way through to referrals, video marketing, social media use, efficiency, technology, and they could do that. And then monthly, we're able to do virtual events just for our members. And then the community aspect, which is incredible, it allows them to support each other. Because you guys know if you're part of a company you're not always vulnerable with all your colleagues talking about your challenges and your struggles. We want to create a community where a, a kid in North Dakota who's a year into the finance industry could get advice from a 25-year veteran who's the CEO of a multi-billion dollar company in Hong Kong. True story just happened a couple of days ago. It's amazing. Because successful people love to give back. Guys, that's why we're doing this podcast. It's yep. It's cool that, you know, we, we get, um, you know, a lot of views and we're able to build our business, but there's other ways to do that. You like to give value to people. So uh, we launched that platform uh, 45 days ago. Uh, yesterday, we crossed our 600th member, we, uh, six continents. So we're, we're globally connecting people who are talking all things business development, efficiency, prospecting uh, for 99 bucks a month. And so we are... I am. I I feel like for me, uh, it allows my speaking engagements to be more meaningful. Uh, it's gotten me off any of the social media stuff because now my life, I'm inside that community, giving advice to all the people in there. Uh, we couldn't be more pumped about it. Yeah, and I mean, you told us you already have like you just launched. You already have like 600 plus members. It's amazing. Yeah, I can't believe that. Yeah, well, God, I tell you what, man, you you know what it's like. I've seen some videos of you at at, at big conferences. For, for 20 years, I've had people saying after they hired me to speak, like, hey, do you want the the list of all the attendees and their emails and all that? And I'm like, no. I mean, why? why? What am I going to do with that? Dude, I've spoken in front of 15,000 people. It's like, why would I want 15,000 emails? I wish I could have that back. Yeah, I was going to say, but, what the heck, Dan? You needed me in your life at that time. That yeah. was- oh, my God. Tell me. I'm so jealous of the way you utilize social media. But to me... It was hypocritical because if I'm up there talking about being a referral expert and then I'm hitting you up with this marketing, that's kind of contradictory. But what I've learned is the marketing now is to be able to get the knowledge and the implementation skills at scale. And when I when I had that kind of aha moment, I was like, if I'm on stage and there's a bunch of uh, people in the audience wanting to implement what I'm talking about, I'm doing a disservice by not having a platform that's affordable for them to be able to execute on that. So we launched it. It's, it's only been a soft launch so far. So we haven't really put it out there. We were hoping to get 50 to 100 members. Uh, and we crossed, we crossed 500 in the first 10 days. And we were like, holy crap, we're, we're on to something here. That is just wow. ridiculous, man. Cool. How it. do people uh, sign up for or learn more? Yeah, yeah. Uh, if they want to check it out, they can go uh, just to school, which is s k o o l dot com forward slash uh, exchange. And, and I'll tell you, Luke, uh, we we do this. I know David loves you, and he had, he had said that if uh, you know if I wanted to throw it out there, anybody that that checks it out, number one, you get a seven day free trial, so you're not even charged for a week. So if you don't like it, you click a button and you're out. We won't bug you about that. 
Um, but if you if you get in there, if you become a member and you DM me inside of there and just put stay paid in there, uh, what we'll do is we'll get you a link to add another member at no cost. So you can, I know a lot of people have support staff or maybe they have a business partner. Um, so just put that keyword so we know that you came from here um, for that so, and we'll, we'll get people in there. That's awesome, awesome man. Dan, thank you so much for coming back on the podcast, sharing your knowledge and all of your wisdom. Before we close out, though, uh, how can people connect with you? Other yeah, than in school, this so is, maybe, cool, maybe this, schools today. This is this is where people are people like Luke are going to get disgusted by me. I go to school. I live inside of there. Um, it's like having a digital retainer with all the coaches that are inside there. But if you go to my Instagram, if you're curious, like what kind of meals I had in New Zealand, you can go to my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you at some point I need to hire a firm to create a good social media uh, presence for me. That's that's kind of my next phase of this. Love it. Thank it's you, Dan. So good. Uh, Cody, Stephen, thank you for joining us. How can people connect with you? Absolutely. Um, yeah, so you can email us at team at acrebrothersrealty.com. Um, I get a lot of people call me from the podcast, actually. So feel free to reach out via phone call, 434-216-5306. That's awesome. Awesome. Thanks, guys. And thank you all so much for listening. You can get the show notes as well as all of those links and contact information that we mentioned over at staypaidpodcast.com. If you like this episode, uh, head on over to Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Drop us a five-star review along with a comment. We'll make sure to read it here on the show. And the best way to support the show is to share this episode with someone that you know. If you want to get hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at remindermedia.com. And of course, you can follow us on social media as well. We are at Stay Paid Podcast. For this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Syke. I'm Luke Acre. Dan, thank you so much, man. You never disappoint. You truly are one of the best thought leaders when it comes to referrals. So everybody go check them out. Go look what he ate for breakfast or lunch in New Zealand. <laughs> go follow him on Instagram. <laughs> Your action item from this, though, so valuable. Pick 10 of your clients this week, call them up, and especially your, your ones you just worked with. Ask them about their experience. Where do they see their experience with you? What are they saying about your brand, your value proposition? Because Dan said it best. That is truly your value prop. That's truly your brand. It's what they're telling the marketplace, not what you think you're telling the marketplace. It's what your clients and advocates are telling the marketplace. Do the work, call them up, get that consulting done where they can share with you what they love about you. And then maybe they'll even share with you the things you can improve which are the really golden nuggets. Remember the difference yeah. between top producers and mediocre producers in every business. It's top producers take action. Take action on that today.